Hello, hello, and welcome to the Astral Traveler with me, Retta. Um, our call number tonight is 706-283-0818. Again, 706-283. Uh, Retta, sorry, that's 760. <laughs> oh, 760? Yep. I had some dyslexia there for a minute, so let's say this again. 760-283-0818. Again, 760 760- 283-0818. And also to remind everybody that on the 24th, Andrew Gah um, will be coming on and telling us a little bit about his um, experience, experiences and having a, a, a fun chat with him. And also, I would like to say thank you for tuning in, and I hope people call in with questions or experiences. I look forward, I look forward to that tonight. And uh, so let's begin. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the solar flares again, starting our conversation. Um, I guess there's been a lot of them this week. Um, I kind of slept through uh, like two days straight, 48 hours. Um, I slept through the two major uh, solar flares. I don't, I guess that was my body of, my body's way of winding down, and um, I slept through it, where other people and uh, <laughs> are going a little bit crazy. And I was just talking to Reset, who was on the line with me right now, and uh, he had an interesting perspective, and I kind of agree with uh, his perspective, where he was saying that if people are already in an agitated state, that these solar flares seem to uh, be really bringing it bringing it out more and making more people agitated. Um, and where I, thank God I slept through it. Because the first day, uh, I was kind of um, not feeling so good. And I guess my body's uh, way, my higher self way was to get through it, was just to sleep and kind of recharge for other people. And I've noticed that even in some of the um, messages I'm getting um, from people, I'm getting a lot of confrontational messages, which uh, is kind of, kind of uh, threw me back a little bit um, because it's not my point here on the Astral Traveler to be confrontational. Um, like I say, whatever works for you, whether it's my way or whether you find another way, I'm just giving you my opinion or trying to help you uh, get through some hurdles that I've experienced. So maybe when it's when you um, astral travel or project, you have to go through the same hurdles, and you'll be able to straight away get some work done. So that's it. I don't mean to be. Con- I, I don't need anybody to be confrontational with me um, because <laughs> I'm not one to be confrontational. My years, 14 years of being a nurse and. Um, just my personal, my personality at this time in my life, I really don't have the, the patience for it, and I, I will admit that. But um, like I always say, you have to use what resonates with you. My whole goal is to help people begin to astral travel, and they can research and find out things for themselves, not to have to rely on me or anybody else. This is a, this is a self um, fulfilling prophecy. You can learn on your own. You can figure out what your true path is, what you need to do. It's not for me or anybody else to tell you what your path is all about. It's only up to you what your path. And and even people that are out here talking these days and, and giving their opinions, even if they're this info, if they're giving out this info, they're going to have a little bit of truth. A little bit of their truth is going to resonate, but in between the truth, there's going to be a lot of um, uh, disinfo in between. So it's really up to you to use your sixth sense, that gut instinct we were born with, that we kind of lost on, along the way. We really had to harness it again and really get it um, in, ship, <laughs> in tip-top shape. You know, so you can be able to, when you hear something, it's funny, when I listen to other uh, lecturers or, or people that are talking about different su- subjects, it's, fi- it's funny how their conversation goes through my head like a, 
like a folder. So I have my little folders. And as they're talking, some things go into the resonator folder and some things go into, ah, oh, it's not for me, toss the side folder. And that's what you really have to do, everybody, including myself or anybody. You really have to pick out what what matters to you, what makes what in your gut feels like, yeah, you know, that's that's really hitting home or no, they're really hitting off the park. Because there's billions and billions of people in this world and we're gonna have billions and billions of different experiences. Not two experiences are gonna be the same. You know, and my what I come here is to let you guys know that, hey, you have this ability. Don't let it, you know, go by the wayside. Use your ability, tune it, and have your own experiences. Find your own answer. You know, if you want to see something, if you're listening to something and you're like, no, I don't know if that's true or not, take the time to go out there and, and, and you'll find it. If you want to say, hey, when I, when I said I don't really feel that the sun is truly what the scientists are claiming what the sun is, you can say the next time you astro travel, let me go to the sun and see what that sun is about. And maybe you'll have the same kind of feel the same experience as I do, and maybe you'll have a whole different experience. That's up to you. And really at this time, you know, solar flares are going to make, a, make some people a little crazy. Um... And if you're feeling crazy at this time, you know, maybe it's time to step back and, and really try to, to figure out what's going on, not try to be so confrontational with people or argumentative and maybe just figure out, is it me having these feelings or is it the solar flares giving me these feelings or is something else going on in my life right now that's making me have these feelings? That's not for me, that's not for me to decide. That's for you to decide. It's it's yourself. You know, we have a responsibility to self. You know, you can't blame any shortcomings on anybody else. That's one thing about this time in our life. Even though there's millions of us and we're like a collect, it's really individual. Where we individually have to be responsible for ourselves, our actions, what our future holds what our awakening process is and what we're here what we're here on this earth to do right now you know it's not really a, a team sport it is somewhat of an individual sport and uh it's it's really up to you to decide what you need to do at this time it, it people really can't um, tell you what to do so that's one of my um things also if people are now just starting to have um some feelings of the astral projection, whether or not they're actually going through with the process of, of having a full astral projection. I think this is the time to really try. Um, if you were thinking about trying it, this is the time to really try because um, it's like everything is aligned for you right now. The, the, the spirits and the energy is really, really um, up there. So if you wanted to try it, this is the best. Did someone was just talking? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I was just saying hello. I was trying to get to connect. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Retta. Oh, no problem, Carolyn. How are you today? I apologize. I, I didn't mean to do that to you. <laughs> I, I've been trying to connect for a few minutes, and I apologize. I kept saying hello, 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 so I apologize. And I, I, I'm here. I'm here. So, I, I, frankly, Retta, I really do want to hear, because I know you've been working hard on your show, and I, I, I think a lot more people need to listen to your show, because I know you've been working hard on this, hon. Well, well, you know, I've had some. I've had a lot of listeners that really, you know, um, that have really gave me some positive uh, messages from from the show, and even found the show not even from Friends of Freeman, which is strange. I didn't expect other people to find the show that were not part of the Friends of Freeman, so that kind of surprised me. And it's good that people who do find the show to come on Friends of Freeman and, and really. Uh, become of the friendship agenda dot com um, and and really be a part. This is this very special time that we're we're going through. This is the one time the internet makes it where people from all over the world is just uh, uh, one click away from you know interacting with people across the world. So this is a very special time. We couldn't do this ten fifteen years ago. So you know. It really makes you think that, you know, as big as this world is, this Internet, that this thing we call Internet, really makes the world seem a lot smaller and a lot more homely. 
So I suggest everybody, you know, become um, a member of uh, the Friendship Agenda and uh, come see us all and see everybody else on Type 1 Radio with Sonic. That's on a Saturday, Swan on Fridays, and um, Free, uh, Free Energy J is going to be on, I believe, this weekend. Um, That'd be great. Yeah, so, you know, but we were talking, I was talking a little bit about, you know, the solar flares and about this being a good time that if you did want to astral project, it's like this is the perfect time. The energy is in the air, and um, you'll realize before you know it that you'll start astral projection. And once you start, it, it's like it comes, it comes off, it. and as soon as you'll have that feeling, You'll know constantly, oh, I'm about to astral project. As soon as you put your head, you know that you're going to have this experience. And where it takes you, some days you don't know. And some days I find myself like, what am I doing? I'm in uh, somebody's house or somebody's room, and I'm like, why am I here? But sometimes there's a reason why I'm there. And uh, not necessarily that I wanted to go there, that something brought me there. So, and it's not scary, you know, that you have it. I I always try to tell people you have that power. So these entities in these different dimensions, you know, can only come to you physically, you know. And then you'll realize the power you truly have because with thought, you can destroy them. But you don't really have to destroy them because it doesn't matter. And that's what I... I want people to realize, like, the powers that are, everybody feels that they're so important, the Illuminati. And once you realize that you need things from all different perspectives, you realize what a small role that these powers that we really have. And, you know, even though they might agitate us on this reality and this physical plane, when you're on the other side, you realize that they're not really that important. That what they're doing is a means to an end. If they're, it's what they're, their last ditch effort of survival, and um, it's because most of us don't realize that we are more than what we are here in this physical plane. That we are truly a god within a god. We are the we are the sons of God. So we were all gods, and the god that we're looking for is in ourselves. And you really have to to really. Think about that and realize that, yes, you know, we've been worshiping, we've been to worship a one and only God, and that's not it. We are we are a God. We are a creator God. And with our thoughts, we can create anything. And you can see that when you do go to these different planes and do go into your spirit self, and instead of using this space, you're out of the space suit, and you're not constricted by gravity or anything like that. You're just... Wherever your thought takes you, you can go. And you realize how powerful you truly are and how creative you can truly be when you don't have the the limitation on this physical reality. And how when we were born, we lost all that. And every night when you actually travel, whether you know it or not, you go back in your body, you're being born again, over and over again. And it's, it's strange how now that I'm over there, and I try to remember and bring it back, it's like it really makes you think, wow, you know, that's what happened to us. That's why we forgot everything. It, it's, this, it's this low vibratory frequency that we are here on this planet Earth. And these beings know that, and they know that their time is up when all of us on this little planet called Earth realizes that, hey, we are more than a spacesuit and that we are rear gods. And we can, we are spirit and we live forever and we can destroy with just a thought. When we all realize that their power, they, they, will cease to, they, will, they will cease to exist on our plane, you know. And uh, at this time, too, you're going to see a lot, of, a lot of dust around you. I have personally noticed a lot of people um, – that were young, family members that were young that I grew up with that are no longer here, and they just dropped dead um, from heart attacks. And I'm like, wow. And I was talking to a few people from um, the French Agenda, and uh, we were talking, and I was like, yeah, it, it has to be that their frequency, they, they either only came on to be here for this a little bit of experience or that their frequency is not being able to maintain it, and they're just dropped off. 
we are now going into a frequency that we've never been. We're going higher and higher, and we're going to notice a lot of people, you know, um, checking out and dying around us at this time because I feel that they're vibratory and their frequency is not able to continue on the course. And things are going to get a lot more stranger than this. You know, we're going to start seeing some real, real strange things coming, even from our, from from the elite, from the president. You really can't even, they're going to try their best to scare the living crap out of us. That's what they're really going to, because that's the only thing, that's the only weapon that they have is fear. And, you know, most of us that aren't awake, we have fear, fear of losing our things, fear of losing our family, fear of losing our life, fear. We're fearful of everything, fear of the unknown, you know, and that's all the power they have on us. And once you realize, and I always say to try to do, because then when you realize, when you're on the astral plane, you realize that you don't just, uh, you don't, you're you're not dying, you know, that you're always forever. I just noticed that there is a caller. I'm sorry, I, I started rambling. And um caller, are you still there? Hi, is that me? Yes. Hi. Hi, my name is Hugh. I'm calling from Virginia. Oh, how are you Hugh, from Virginia? I'm terrific. I was enjoying what you were saying and uh I'm actually standing in my truth as a way shower to help people with their spirituality and creativity, and I have no qualms in putting out a message to the elites, and that is when you're in the right kind of an alignment, when you have your heart aligned with the Creator correctly and ask for guidance on a daily basis, and you're in gratitude and take actions, positive actions to help others you'll be perfectly fine when God's harmonics come. Now, harmonics are sound waves. If you're an elite, you can be sitting on your yacht over in the Mediterranean, sipping a pina colada, and you're going to spontaneously combust or explode. The same thing if you're in an underground bunker. You can save your life and maybe live a little longer if you start changing your ways. But otherwise, that's what's going to happen. I can walk down the street and like you were talking about people having heart attacks, the stranger things are that people may be exploding all around me. I'll be perfectly fine. Yeah, and and that's what I'm not saying that necessarily, I don't know if that necessarily is going to happen, but I understand where you're coming from. I have no fear. I could die tomorrow right. and I have no right. fear. I know that if I'm on the other side, my work will continue, and they don't want me over there. And that's well, the thing, thing too I've, I've, is... Uh, if if they take me out, uh, they, you know what a migraine headache is. I don't. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to be one of them with the migraine headache. I will give them from the spirit world. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and that's one thing I was saying to a lot of these whistleblowers and stuff. That you know, they they put their their own safety in other people's. You need to put in yourself. Learn, learn to go on the other side. You know, and once you're over there, they realize how powerful that you are powerful. They don't want you over there. They would rather well, have you on the plane right yeah, here. Yeah, I'm because creating a whole new paradigm. Okay. I'm bringing spirituality huh? into global economics and combining it with unconditional love. And uh, as crazy as it sounds, it's achievable. It's just a question of people learning how to think differently, interacting with existing technologies and with each other in caring, sharing ways. True. And I think this is what the solar flares are doing right now. I think the solar flares are father son, that the entities up there on the sun, it's a it's a big entity and they're they are trying to wake us up with the solar flares. They're increasing our 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 frequency and our vibrations here on Earth. So that the more that they're sending out, the more that, you know, we're increasing. And I completely do not think a solar flare took out the dinosaurs at all. No, I, I don't think it had anything to do with that. And I don't think the sun at this time is going to uh, destroy us as people are scared of. I think it's completely different that right now that the sun, I don't know how you feel about that, Hugh, about the sun, but I really feel it's energy and 
it's a frequency that, it, that the sun is sending to us right now. Well, I love the sun. I go out and sit in it, and I actually uh, love sitting in nature. And when I come back in, my creativity is kicked up way high. It, it's yeah, I, I I I enjoy the sun, and they're study, they're coming out now with studies saying that it's better to get some sun. <laughs> you know, you don't overdo anything, but the, actually, that vitamin D, the natural vitamin D from the sun is very important to get. Yes, it is. And and, and, and the, the melanin that you have in your skin, and everybody has some, and, it's the, and, and the more that you're out there in the sun, the more melanin you, you get, and the more you're able to absorb the sun and the sun's rays. And I think they are, are putting a lot of people with fear of the sun right now. And that was, that's been going on for the last 15 years, that they're making people fearful of the sun, not to want to be out there and then to put this, and I'm not saying there's not reasons for sunscreen, but I'm thinking 30 years ago, 40 years ago, they didn't have all this sunscreen and people weren't having all this cancer on their skin. This is just a new thing that's been going on in the last 20 some years. Why is that? Well, they're it's, making, they, well it's, they're poisoning us in every way they can. They're looking to follow that UN Agenda 21 to depopulate the planet by 6 billion people. But I point out, too, whoever drew that up really put a lot of thought into it except for one fact, that why aren't they setting the example and getting the heck off the planet first and well, leaving the rest of the, the planet? The Is ones that, that drew up right? Agenda 21, they want to eliminate three-quarters of the population on the planet. Why didn't they get off the planet first as way showers and leave us alone? Oh, they can't get off the planet. Their, vi they their vibrations are too, they're stuck here. Oh, no, I, I'm saying that, you know, they want to kill everybody. Why didn't they kill well, themselves first and we would have been better off? <laughs> yeah, we probably would have, but, right, I'm not even worried about them trying, you know, they, they throw, that's one of the fear tactics, you know, they put out there. Well, I mean, on they are successful to some them. degree. They're shrinking the packaging, up the pricing, bankrupting everybody, poisoning the foods with chemicals, putting all the stuff yeah. in the chemtrails in the skies, the soil's all poison, they won't let you grow a garden. So I just laugh at it all, and that's... Uh, I say, that's not my reality. Screw you. Yeah, that's, that's exactly how I feel. That's not my reality. So I don't really feed into, to, they want people to feed into this nonsense that you can't do this and you can't do that. And believe me, they, they're trying to put as much fear with the chemtrails, everything as possible. We all know what they're doing. You know, right. but if we constantly live in fear of, of them coming to pick us up and killing us, what kind of life are we going to have? And what kind of spirit beings are we going to be if we're in a constant state of fear? Our frequency and our, our vibes, our vibrations are going to be so low because being in fear is a low vibration. Well, that's why I'm standing on my truth. If I can share my name, your listeners might see some interesting things on the Internet. Well, thank you, Hugh, for calling in. And, yes, I, and I, I believe you had a message, too. And uh, I, I like to hear more people like this because he's not in fear. I'm not saying I agree with all of the message. You know, I agree with a lot of it. I'm not living in fear. If they want to come pick me up today, you go ahead. <laughs> you know, you can't, you might physically be able to, you know, imprison this body, but you can't imprison my spirit or my soul. And I can leave every night, you know, and go on adventures every night, whether you have this body or not. This is just the space suit. And the more you become one with your power and, and the more knowledge and, and the, one, the more that you become more spiritual and you, more, you explore more of your spiritual side, you'll realize that all this nonsense that they're doing doesn't even matter. You know, it really doesn't. Because this earth, like I've, I've said, for, she's graduating. She wants us all to graduate with us. That's up to, her, that's up to us if we're going to graduate with her. She's graduating. This earth is never going to be the same ever again. You know, she's graduating. She's been through here for billions of years. She's had lots of wars. 
She's been put through enough. She's tired. She's ready to move on. And she wants us to come with her, you know, because as true mother, she wants her children to come with her. And you have to look at this as as this planet as a mother goddess being because she every she's protected us from rain she's housed us she's fed us she's given all of herself to us you know so you really have to to look at her like that and as any mother as I'm a mother I would want my kids to go with me but that's my kids choice whether or not they want to go with me or not we all have an individual choice to make and it's up to you what you want to go. You want to feed into all this fear. And that's, and yeah, in one way, the, the powers that were love the Internet and stuff because, you know, they can continue to spread their fear. But they didn't realize that there was going to be something on this Internet, too. It's going to make people interconnect more and be able to share experience and be able to vibe with one another and, and, and try to figure this out. And uh, that's my main goal is for everybody. Believe me, a lot of us who type one, you know, we give of ourselves. And I like to think Reset and Sonic, they give of themselves every week. And um, Phi Chick and uh, Steve, uh, you know, nobody's getting paid or anything for us. We just want to connect with our humanity and with the humanity of everybody and share and and learn from each other. And that's our main goal. I think that's one of the main wonderful things about Type 1 Radio. It's the radio by us, for us, you know, so um, we really can interconnect that way. And I don't have fear of these solar flares. You know, I, I've slept through, like, a two days straight. I was comatose. I, I was up maybe an hour. I didn't even realize I slept through two days straight. And uh, I think Jay told me, oh, there's these solar flares. And I was thinking, yeah, I'm hell on wheels. That was the way of my upper <laughs> spirit self saying, you just need to sleep through this right up. <laughs> no, you, you don't need to be up with all these different craziness going on. You don't have the patience for it. You just need to sleep through it. And I'm kind of that they did allow me just to sleep through it. But I'm back now. And, um, I astral projected. I'm getting into that maybe in a couple of weeks, but I did have some strange astral projections. I had a really wild morning this morning. I went to bed. I was up until about 5 o'clock in the morning, and um, I had a really interesting morning. But um, I really, you know, I, I would love to hear from people who said, hey, I've tried it, and or I know it's a very personal thing. A lot of people have told me, and they chat, and they're like, "Reda, well, thank you for sharing because it is very personal." I know it's very personal, but the way for all of us to learn is that we we have to, you know, touch these personal aspects of ourselves, you know, not to hide behind it and and share, you know, because maybe whatever you're sharing, somebody else maybe understands or, or went through that same experience. I'm still learning this every day. By no means is anybody on this planet an expert. We're learning. We're constant learning. Uh, we're always constantly learning something better, you know, and that's one of the, that's one of the great, great things about being uh, in this humanity at this time. And being a, a a spirit being is that we're constantly learning and having these different experiences that we can bring back and um, learn from and, and, and keep on learning. And there's any different dimensions to go to. There's any different planes. There's, there's thousands of entities. There's probably unknown how many entities are out there. It's, it's, you can't even count that high, you know. Everybody has different experiences. And I do share when you do start astral projection, you really have to use all your senses because your eyes will betray you. You know, you really, you can see like the most beautiful entity. And that entity that is so beautiful that you're thinking it's angelic. And oh, you know, that's got to be like a spirit god or something like that. And it's not. It's a negative entity or a service to self entity and you're just going by what you see. So when you're on these different planes, you have to use all your senses. You have to have gut feeling. You have to kind of uh, 
listen with your ears and your eyes and, and have that feeling. You can't just go by what your eyes say. And it really, once you start using your, your sixth sense, kind of, and, and your psychic abilities on that plane, it manifests into these planes. So on this plane, psychic awareness has, has been raised, and so hasn't your sixth sense. So you can, it, it helps you navigate through, through this uh, physical plane a lot better. And I've and even on those planes, things aren't what they seem. The horrible looking being, and that horrible being could be a very positive service to others. Being, were you about to speak, reset? No, I guess I just heard breathing. <laughs> no, no, no. I think that was uh, Hugh. I, I had left his line open. Maybe I should mute that. <laughs> Still there? Oh, he, oh, I'm sorry. He he can stay on. He can mute himself. I I don't care. But he can stay on. It was a thank you again for calling. And, but that's one of my main things I want to say is that you really have to start using your own instincts, your own gut feeling, because that's what's gonna you know really guide you on this physical plane and over there. And the more you become comfortable, and a lot of people aren't comfortable using their gut feeling. They kind of second guess themselves, and then they and then later on they're like, "Damn, I wish I could have you know went with that gut feeling the first time." And you know that, that's what I want you to do. I want you to start using that gut feeling, and even sometimes even make it stronger by even testing yourself with your gut feelings. You know. And go with them sometimes and just say, hey, for the next week, whatever my gut feeling says, that's what I'm going to do. And see how that works. You know, because we really have to, we, we've learned on this physical plane to depend on everything ourselves or anything but our own psychic intuition or our, our sixth sense. We, we depend on everybody else tell us what's going on in the world. We depend on everybody else that tells us what's going on in our own house. And we really need to get away from that, you know, because they at this time, like you're saying, they're throwing everything at us. They're in a, they're in a desperate, they're in desperate mode right now. And you see how when people are desperate, they are bound to do anything and can do anything. So you really can't feed into their nonsense. You really have to just keep it going, and the whole world can be blowing up on the side of you, and you're just walking like you have a care, no care in the world. Because they're th they're going to throw everything at us in the next few years. They're just throwing it at us left and right. With the they're poisoning the the water, the air, our food, everything. And what they don't realize because they are not spiritual beings. They they left that a long time ago. Is that a spiritual being? No matter what you throw at it, it's going to continue. A spiritual being never dies. It just advances and, and moves on to something better and better. You know, so they don't they don't realize that. You know, this is their only thing they have right now. Because they they, they got away from spirit. They got away from self and, and rely too much on intellect. And I'm not saying being smart isn't good, but you need a, you you need you need that spirit. That spirit is what guides you. That spirit is, is your moral compass that tells you, ah, oh, that's not a right thing to do. You know, that's not the wrong thing. That's something wrong to do. You know, that's that spirit is your your moral compass and your and what's going to get you through the world. And they they have lost that. And it, it's not saying they can't get it, but they can't get it now. You know. They have to go through this over and over and over again, and just going to be a bunch of service to self entities with themselves from here on out. <laughs> and they're just going to, they're not going to have us nice spirit beings around. They're just going to be able to pummel each other, you know, until they they get the hang of it and try to back some spirit. And it could take two million years from now, hundred thousand years from now. Who knows? I, I'm not saying that they'll never be able to to fear it again, but just at this time they're stuck. This is uh, this is their prison planet. This is their big prison planet. They're stuck here. We're not. And the more you go into spirit, you'll realize that you're not stuck here. And 
and like I always say, that's why I try to encourage and try to give people the power to don't be afraid to do this astral um, travel. You feel that feeling that you're free fall, and sometimes you go with it. You know, don't get get all worried. Just go with it, and 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 don't be afraid to try something new. Because a few years ago, I was the big scaredy cat. I was scared of my own shadow. <laughs> I was a scaredy cat. And now I'm like, bring it. Bring it on. And uh, I want to find new things. Bring it on. You know? And I've noticed that the more that I'm, I'm in this higher, these higher dimensions and vibes and, and the more that these negative entities don't want nothing to do with me. I can't even find a negative entity on the astral plane right now. <laughs> they won't get close to me at all. They're like, oh, no, we're leaving her alone. In the beginning, when I had no idea, and I was just trying to figure out what was going on and what is this astral plane, and I didn't even know what it was, and I was just trying to figure out what was, what is this? Oh, they attacked me. Oh, my God. They had me scared to death. And then when I finally got let go of that fear and just said, wait a minute, enough's enough. You're not going to abuse me anymore. And ever since that day when I put my foot down and said, enough is enough, I haven't had one bother me since. And some days, I, I, some days I'm looking for them because I'm trying to figure out what they're doing. And I'm looking for them, but as soon as they... They must feel my vibration or whatever. No, I'm coming. They're gone. So <laughs> that's funny. And we're back with this remote viewing. I always talked about they go hand in hand. And the more you become familiar with the astral travel or projection, the more you realize what are what's possible while you're in um, this astral form or astral body. And, and you'll realize that all things are possible. Could you imagine being able to talk to anybody at any time in any place? Imagine having that experience that I want to, that everybody any, or all accessible to you, that there's nothing that is not accessible, that there's endless possibilities that you can go anywhere, see anybody. You want to talk to Mother Earth, you can talk to her. You want to talk to Gandhi, talk to him. You know, he might not be on this spiritual plane or they might not be on this spiritual plane anymore, but they're still in the collective somewhere on a different plane. And you can talk to them, you know. It's it's strange sometimes with, when there's so many endless possibilities. Sometimes I stoop myself when I'm over there. I'm like, I want to do too much. At, at the same time, I end up waking myself up because I'll start like, oh, I want to go visit this. And then in mid-thought, I'll change. No, I want to go visit this. And I have to learn myself to kind of quiet my, my brain and just go with one thing at a time. You become so excited. You can go or see anybody, and you can even go see them on this physical plane. So you're in your spirit body, and if you want to go see somebody on this physical plane, you can. You want to go into the White House? I'm not saying I would want to go there, but you can go there. You know, you want to <laughs> you want to see what's really going on in Buckingham Palace? Hey, you can go there. I don't personally want to go there. I kind of figure what's going on there, but if you really want to see it with your own eyes, you can go there. You know, it's up to you. Remember, you are responsible for your own your your own decisions. You are responsible. You know, so and and also you can't really even when you first start doing the astral plane, keep that journal. Write everything down until you really are very familiar and you really know what you're looking at or what what you're seeing, because like I said, there's service to self entities. If your vibration is low, you're going to be in a lower vibratory plane. And there's going to be a lot of service to self entities there that might be masquerading as, you know, there's something else. And that's when you have to use your gut and your instincts and not get too stuck in your ego, what you think you know. You really have to 
check everything, and that's one thing I love about when I'm in a spirit body. You can look at an object. You can see around it, under it, behind it, on top of it, in it, all at the same time. And as the higher you go, we don't speak to other entities. And you can kind of realize how high you are in the spiritual plane over as how you communicate with each other and how they are you know, the lower the lower um the lower vibratory animals kind of, you know, when they converse with you, they can hide things. But the higher you go, there is no hiding. You know, you, uh, the person can see through you and has complete access to your thoughts. And you have complete access to their thoughts. So there is no hiding. So there really can't be too many service to self entities out there when you know what they're all about and they know what you're all about. You know, so you, you can really kind of figure out. But the lower you are on the, the, they can kind of trick you. And you really got to start really kicking into that gut feeling of what, you, what you're what you feeling, you know, and using that that, that side sense. And that's why there was some people that are writing me, you know, the very first couple of times they're on it, they're like, yeah, but don't really trust in the beginning everything you see. Write it down. And go back to it. The next time you astral travel, go back or, or try to see and try to, and things, one thing I wanted to say too, things will come to you. Synchronicity will happen. Like, I seen. And I was like, are those really great aliens? What am I looking at? Hey, Retta, can you hear me? You hear me. how amazing you are? Oh, thank you, Carolyn. No, I'm not bullshitting you. I'm telling you, when you start ranting, you you put me to shame, hon. You are amazing, hon. Okay, I rant, like I, I get my tired self kind of comes in. Sometimes I just start rambling and don't even realize what's coming uh, out. Hey, you're not rant, No, you're not rambling. I say ranting in a complimentary term. You are amazing when you start really telling people what's real. Okay. You, can, you can kick butt, hon. You can really seriously kick butt. I try. I try to kick dimensional butt. <laughs> that's we mean that in a nonviolent way. You know, we just mean that in a, you know, proverbial way. That it's like, you know, and seriously, and that's why I love you because, you know, you really do get people on the gut level and you talk to them at the heart level because you're sincere and what you're saying you believe. Yeah. And I don't try to, and one of the things that I don't, I've learned and realized I don't want to, I don't like to get caught up in these big names. Yeah, of course, each plane has a name that we name in this, in this reality. In this reality, if we name something, then we can own it. Or, you know, in, the, in that reality on the astral plane, there is no name to things. So I don't like to make people get stuck in these big names and, and all this. Just go with your <laughs> That's the, that's the main purpose of everything is to have those feelings and to really go with your feeling and, and, and to go. That will always guide you the right way. When have you ever used your feelings and your gut told you not to do something and you did it anyway? And, 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 and you were saying afterwards, it told me not to do that. I hear you. You're amazing. It, it's all the time, you know. And that's my main point is that we have we have it within ourselves to do anything. And people are always concerned about the powers that were and what the elite are trying to do. They're doing what the only thing they know how to do. They are being what they are and what they know how to do. They don't know no other way. They're desperate. That's so right. I'm not going to feed into their nonsense because I'm not desperate. I know that if I die here, I still go on. They don't, they don't have, they know that they don't, and they won't right now until they realize that they're more than what they're doing here. And I'm not saying that these powers that were can't change. They can change. You know, they can, you can always change. You can always better yourself. They can always try to get out from where they are. And maybe they'll only have to do it five more times. <laughs> but I'm telling you, at this time, I'm done. When I'm off this physical plane, I'm not coming back. Not that I don't love, you know, the, 
the surroundings here, but on other planes, they're beautiful surroundings too. I want to move on and, 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 and explore more things. And like I was saying, if you don't really know what you're looking at, synchronicities will come to explain what you were looking at. And it's funny because like when, it first, when I first had the experience with the grays, and I was just really in awe. I'm like, those grays kind of look not like the grays I see on TV or what people write. I'm like, that's not what those grays look like to me. I mean, yeah, they were tall. They had big eyes. But they had human features. And it kind of bugged me out. And I'm like, what the hell am I looking at? And it was strange how things would show me. Like one day, I'm, I'm reading a book. And something happens to look up. I happen to look up. And I look up on TV, and these eyes were looking at me from the TV. And I was like, holy crap, those eyes look familiar. <laughs> what the secret message that I just got at that time, something made me look up, and it made me connect the dots, was like, wow, what I seen was a gray, but it was a hybrid gray. Wow, that's what they're doing. They're mixing, they're mixing humans and grays. And they've been doing it a long time. But these are humans in grace. But this thing that looked like a gray and had human features did not have a human spirit. Let me tell you, know when you're next to a negative entity or somebody that serves the self, you know that they aren't good. <laughs> you feel it. Like, whoa, when I see these two beings. I know shit, bro. Yeah, you, when you see them, and you're not even looking at them, because if you look at the eyes, these eyes are beautiful. I mean, they were the deepest bluish green eyes you can get lost in the eyes. But just the feeling you got was like, whoa. And, you know, how they just attacked and how they, the way that they thought of us. I was just like, wow. And is that what they're doing? You can see how they're trying to make the humans, the human 2.0. They're mixing, even though they've been mixed with our DNA, they haven't mixed it to, the, to this form as of late. And that's what they're trying to do to get around them being locked on this planet. They're thinking that they kind of keep mixing up the human DNA with theirs. They continue their race, one, and they can kind of get into a little bit of the human, human spirit that we have, godliness that we have. And, and, and you can't you can't make that in a petri dish. <laughs> you can't make our godliness in a petri dish shit. at all. No shit, there's your. <laughs> you can't, and and the people were like, "How can you say we're God?" But right there, even in the Bible, that that they said, and they the sons of God. We are the sons of God. It doesn't take a rocket science. We are all the sons of God. So if you are, and they tell you you are the son of God, what does that make you? That makes you a god. I'm not saying we are the god. Amen, baby. You know, we are God. We are our own God. And I did want to see God. It was it was so funny. All I seen was the hand of God. And I look. I think it was like, um my who who wrote the paper uh, the pain with the with the hand of God. Michael Angelo. Angelo. I know. The hand of God struck me off because I was like, when I said that pain, I was like, that's what I, that's what I had. I asked me God. I just got a feeling, and the hand came out with my hand, with the hand of God. There was no operation, no nothing. And then I realized that God is what we all thought. It's not just one person. That's why he's not a completely come and say, hey, I am God, because there isn't just, you know, the one God. There was many different beings that created us and many different beings out there, you know, and there was there was creator of God, and we are going to be one of them. And when we move on, we are going to continue to be creator of God, so, you know. That's just one thing, and that's one of the things that I said that you can try. You can, you want to see, some people want to, I don't know why I wanted to talk to God. I said I want to see if there's a real God. There is. I, you know, there's, God. You know, we know there's something better. We know there's more entities that are further progressive than us, right? Come on, right? 
Mm-hmm. Now, yeah, there are. And it's like, you know, everybody's got their own issues, but let's face it, she knows what she's doing. Yeah. And like, like the sun, the, the, the entity, this big love entity, the sun, why do you think at this time we are getting all these solar flips? Amen. Why do you they are trying to the sun, the entity on the sun, the entities, because there was more than one, is trying the best to help with process. That's why they said, you know, Father, Son, Mother, Earth. You know, I think we they got, are. I think we got, huh? negative, I think we got negative answer to this. We got to focus on the others. But there's some negative, you know, do that too, seriously. Yeah, the negative, of course there's negative entity, especially when I'm saying that. When you're on the lower field, first of all, this reality, there is lower dimensions than here on Earth. And this, I mean, we are at the lower dimension here, the, the oh, third you, dimension. No, you didn't, no, is very no, you didn't see the last blind date I was on. Huh? You didn't see the last blind date I was on. Ain't nothing lower than that. <laughs> I've had a couple of those blind dates myself, but... Yeah. Hey, ain't no entity. Ain't no entity. And then that's a good thing right there. That's when you learn to use your gut instinct and learn to fix it. Because your gut instinct would have said, ah, oh, that guy wasn't for you. Keep it moving. Hey, hey, and I don't mean, and it's strange nowadays because people think, oh, I always say I don't have time to bullshit. I have no tolerance. What I mean by that is that I quickly go through my brain when someone's speaking to me or when I'm I'm constantly heal, hearing their voice and and I'm constantly putting things in different folders. And I don't have time for, you know, there's things I can constantly read. I can read someone instantaneously. I can read them and realize, oh, no, they're not someone for me, you know. And that's what everybody needs to do. You need to listen when you listen to anybody. Keep a road deck of folders in your brain. What resonates, what doesn't. And as they're speaking, constantly put those, their, whatever they're saying into folders. And, and, and then you'll, you'll start realizing, wow, I thought that. You know, I felt that she was full of crap or he was full of crap or whatever because there are there is their job. Some of these service and self entities is to fool you and it's to keep you in fear by any means necessary. So they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna give somebody that has a little bit of true presence and they're gonna put a lot of that's not true in it to throw you off. They they, they know if something's completely totally bullshit we're all going to, you're going to really, you're really going to know offhand. So they want to trick you. They want to give you some real, real information mixed in with a whole bunch of bullshit. And it's up to you to figure out which is which. And, I mean, I, I can't blame them. And it took me a while, and my friend Carolyn, oh, it's almost that time to Carolyn, the ET culture, she was like, that's what they're here. You have to love them. And I'm like, why do I have to love them? I really didn't understand about this love, love, love. I don't necessarily feel that you have to love them. I respect all beings. I'm, that doesn't mean that I have to put up with their nonsense or how to abuse me. I can respect you as a being and as another entity, but I don't have to respect you beating you up and knocking you down and say, okay, do it some more. No, I put my foot down and say enough's enough. You're not going to do that to me. I'm no longer your victim. And that's what I'm saying. Well, time went by so fast this week. I am so sorry that I was just rambling. And I thank everybody for calling. Thank you, Carolyn, for calling in. And Hugh, and hopefully next week people will get more comfortable with me calling. You guys write me with your experiences. I get emails every day. But you guys tell me your experiences, let's call in. Let's share. You don't have to use your name if you don't want to. This is yeah, call in, name. people. Call in. Call in to Rutter's yeah, Astro Talk Show. You know, call in and share because this is the time of sharing right now. And 
again this weekend. Listen to Sonic on Type One Lounge. This yep, weekend. We, we have um, a lovely uh, lady from New York called uh, Siobhan, uh, who's going to tell us all about the uh, sovereignty and free beings and uh, all about Sester K Trusts. Um, and we're, hopefully we're going to have a guy from a uh, friend of Freeman, a uh, friendship agenda uh, person from Iceland to give us a bit of a lowdown on what is going on in Iceland and why it's so quiet. Why aren't we hearing any news about uh, the, the Prime Minister being up for uh, criminal charges? Uh, that's on Saturday. <laughs> and, uh, and then tomorrow, the, our resident Swami has his show. And then also on Sunday, we have Free Energy Day. It's a 5D expansion show. <laughs> and yep. also, don't forget, I'll be here every Thursday at 6 p.m. and on 24th. Uh, listen to Andrew Guy. You can hear his original um, interview on Type 1 radio with Sonic. He interviewed, and that was a wonderful interview all about the bees. And we're going to get a little paranormal with uh, uh, Andrew on his go around. On my show, so that should be interesting too. And I thank you guys for coming. I love you all, and you know, blessed be and be blessed. Good night, everybody.